What's up, sons? It's Blind Run with Son of a Tech, and I am upgrading to AMD's new Ryzen. All right, so I'm not going to sit here and speculate with you guys and talk about Ryzen and what I think I know about Ryzen because I don't want you guys to garner any mistrust in me as a tech tuber and as somebody that's passionate about technology. What I can tell you essentially right now is what the specs on the spec sheet at Newegg are and what I think I ordered or what I've ordered at this point and what motherboard I'm going to go with. I'm not going to sit here and give you guys any of the leaked benchmarks. I'm not going to sit here and give you the the benchmarks from AMD themselves because you can't always trust the manufacturer and I don't think that that's the way I want to run my channel personally. If people want to speculate you guys can head over there and get on the hype train. Here we're just going to be as blunt as possible and tell you guys what's going on here. So the CPU I decided to go with was the 1800X. There's also a 1700X and a 1700 releasing on March 2nd of 2017. The specs of all of these are kind of go from the base 1700 to the 1800X and you'll see a bump in power draw or TDP from the 1700 to the 1700X and it stays the same for the 1800X where you just get a 200 megahertz boost in the turbo. So the 1800X is going to be an 8 core product with 16 threads which is going to essentially be something similar to hyper threading that Intel has had for quite a while now. The operating frequency is going to be 3.6 gigahertz and the stock max turbo frequency is going to go up to 4 gigahertz. There's 16 megabytes of L3 cache and it's a 95 watt part like I mentioned before. The socket is actually going to be new which is going to be the AM4 while the hold downs are going to be the same as the AM3 which has the two latches on the side it is a little taller so it doesn't fit and apparently we have to order either a new CPU cooler or potentially just a kind of modification bracket. Right now I do have an H110i GT that I was planning on using but I will have to find one of those brackets which Corsair hasn't released yet. The 1800X does not come with a cooler or a fan so you want to keep that in mind if you're going to purchase it. This is something similar we've seen on the K series from Intel so no surprise there. All of the Ryzen series CPUs are going to be unlocked. This is same with the 1800X that I personally purchased and it supports DDR4 along with all of the other accoutrements such as you know PCI 3.0 and as well as M.2. Now at this point I don't know if it supports any of the new technology from Intel which is Optane. Now if you guys are actually looking at purchasing this you want to keep in mind that the 1800X is going to be $499. You can save $100 and take the 200 megahertz out of the box clock hit with the 1700X, but at this point we're not really even sure if the 1700X is fully capable of reaching the max overclock that the 1800X will match. Soon we will find out. So let's talk about motherboards. They were actually kind of a hard thing to get ahead of here and pre-ordering was not exactly what I would call easy. I scoured for all of the options that I could currently find and I almost went with a B350 which doesn't support SLI or dual graphics at all or multi graphics and that isn't necessarily a reason to shy away from it especially in my position where I'm kind of against multi GPU because it's just not optimized well. AMD is getting better at that but they also don't really have a good 4K solution and I'm currently running a Titan X so I would be fine with a single GPU solution for now but I did kind of lean towards that X series because it does usually come with things like better power delivery and so on and so forth. So the board I went with was the Biostar X370 GT7 and it's the version 5.x so we're not really sure exactly how many versions they're going to come out with and how many iterations of this version 5 they're going to come out with. That being said it's going to support the AMD Ryzen CPUs and the APUs. It is a single chip architecture. It supports four DIMMs of DDR4 and and that only goes up to 2667, which is kind of interesting. My current RAM that I was planning on putting in there is at 2800. We'll have to see if it works. And it supports up to 64 gigabytes capacity. It is RGB. I will hopefully have an option to actually turn the RGB lights off. If not, I will turn them as dark as possible because I don't like running LEDs. I have my theater set up in here and usually when I'm playing on my TV, the light comes off of it and it, it just bugs the crap out of me. I'm not an LED fan. I'm not an LED fan. That's 
that's a good one. As stated before, it does support multi GPU. So we're going to see two PCIe 16 slots and that's going to be times 16 on one or times eight and times eight on both. And then you have some other options where with the APU, you would have a times eight and then some portion of that directed towards the APU. On storage, we have six SATA three connectors and it supports SATA RAID 0, 1, and 10. So you're not going to see anything like support for RAID 6 or RAID 5. So this is definitely isn't a board you want to purchase for any sort of storage solutions. It does support M.2 like I stated before. It is at 32 gigabits a second and it is, let's see, and it supports 32 gigabytes a second or 6 gigabytes a second over the SATA. There is an asterisk here. If you're using one of the APUs, you're going to be limited to 16 gigabytes a second. So keep that in mind if you're looking at putting this board with an APU, which I don't know why you would, but there you go. It has one USB 3.1 type C, one USB 3.1 Gen 2 port. It has a four 3.1s. It has two 3.1 Gen 1s and it has two USB 2.0 headers. It runs a pretty standard Realtek controller for the LAN. Just in case you weren't aware off the bat here, this is an ATX case. This is not an MATX or MITX. And at pre-order in the US, it's coming in at $209. Now that $209, however, does include a 240 gigabyte M.2 drive, and that is at least supported on the Newegg website. So if you're looking at wanting to pick up an additional M.2 drive, and you want what's considered the flagship of a board manufacturer, and this is Biostar's flagship, it actually comes out to a pretty good deal. Similar results and similar features on other manufacturers are going to run you about $250. And of course, there is a step above this as far as premium goes with companies like MSI's Titanium Edition. It's going to be in the northern area of $300. Now, when you're talking about the Ryzen series, the appeal here is going to be bang for the buck. And that's what I'm aiming towards. So I'm not really looking at going all out with a $300 motherboard. And it's also one of the reasons I've never been a fan of the EA. ATX um, fucking Intel shit because I don't really feel like I want to spend $350 on a motherboard and $1,000 on a CPU. Now that's also part of the draw for me in getting into Ryzen at this point and finally getting more than four cores on my gaming machine. Let me know what you guys think of Ryzen in the comment section below and go ahead and go ahead and speculate if you wish. I'm just going to come back at you guys with whatever I find once I get the parts in sometime in the week of March the 2nd. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as well and I will see you next Tuesday.